Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to watercolor and uh, it's a special watercolor of a floral watercolor which I don't do flowers very often as you may know but I'm going to try it today and uh, see how I get along. Uh, hopefully you can uh, maybe give this a try and we'll see uh, see what you make out of it. Um, we're going to do some rhododendrons today <clears throat> and I found a really nice photo from one of my photos for artists photographers that posted this and uh, it's a scene from a, I think it's called the Hanging Rock State Park in North Carolina. I think it's near Raleigh, North Carolina. Anyway, that's the scene. And uh, he's got some beautiful rhododendrons here that are in a, in a woods. So we're going to be able to put a little depth in it, make it uh, have some uh, uh, distance instead of just a picture of a flower. So uh, I kind of like that particular composition. So uh, let me go over to my computer and I want to show you uh, some of the things I've done with the photos and uh, I'll get right back over here at the easel and we'll uh, get this painting started. So hold on just a second. <clears throat> okay, here I am. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, I want to uh, show you this photo. Um, the photo that I got from uh, Johnny Robertson uh, on the, the Facebook page was this one and it's fairly wide and it has uh, <clears throat> it's really too wide for my 11 by 14 format so uh, first thing I usually do is try to see if there's a way to crop it down and make it a little bit more uh, fitting on the paper we're painting on as well as maybe improve the composition so that's the first thing I did so here is the cropped version now this fits 11 by 14 it also emphasizes this the flowers here in the foreground so they actually come forward a little bit and makes them more the star of the show rather than having a lot of that woodsy background showing there on the left side. So that's what I wanted to do with it and that's why I cropped it. I also ran it through my uh, grid um, maker software that's uh, actually a free website and I think I've given that to you before. Uh, to put the 4x5 grid on it, which fits nicely on my 11x14 uh, watercolor paper. And I did, as usual, a value map, which I do most of the time. <clears throat> and I think I may modify this a little bit. I think I'm going to put a little more dark on the lower left side than I actually show <clears throat> in this value map. But uh, we'll see how it goes when I get into the painting. Two other things I did with the photo, which I showed you, I think, last time was take the photo into Photoshop and run it through a couple of uh, artistic filters. And uh, Photoshop has this ability to put a filter on. This particular filter is called the cutout figure, cutout. It basically makes these into like shapes that you can almost cut out with scissors. Um, and they're, they tend to have sharp edges and they're very angular. But I think it makes a very pleasing, interesting composition. I don't think I'm going to paint it that way today. I may leave some of those angles in there and uh, kind of copy a little bit of that idea. But I also ran it through another filter, which is called the watercolor filter. And this kind of is uh, Photoshop's uh, estimation uh, of what a f this painting might look like with the uh, watercolor filter on it. So I'm going to kind of use those as a little bit of a guide to help me since I don't paint watercolors very often. Uh, getting petals right, getting the shading right is um, usually a little, little bit of a challenge. So uh, I may glance at those a couple times just to kind of refresh my memory on how to paint these things um, since I don't have my artistic visual memory have them memorized. Rhododendrons are a special type of flower anyway and uh, so uh, that's what I want to use those particular images for. Um, and then here's my sketch which I always do and uh, you can have that. The links are below this video. You can pull off the original, you can pull off the sketch, you can pull off the value map and you can pull off the grid. I think I put all those out there today and so uh, Anyway, that's what we're going to work on. I've got the sketch already on my paper and I'm going to go back over now to the palette and we'll go through the paints and the, and the brushes and get going. Hold on. Okay, I'm back now and I want to show you my palette and the paints and colors. And uh, it's my standard palette here. Let me bring it up larger for you. And uh, I have my brushes, my Sterling Edwards brushes. So this is a few of the brushes. I don't have all the brushes here, but I have this uh, small uh, bristle brush that I use a lot of times for blending and that sort of thing. I have a one inch and a half inch flat. I have a number 12, number 8, and number 4 round and I have a script liner. 
Um, I also have another brush I'm going to put some of the water on the paper with today. This is a Winsor Newton Series 965, one and a half inch uh, nylon uh, bristle brush or nylon uh, synthetic brush. And uh, I've had this brush for probably 20, 20 years or more. Um, I don't use it a lot. It starts chipping off a little bit. You can see the paint's coming off of it. So I've had it for a while. Um, so that's the brushes. I also uh, want to go over my paints with you so uh, you know what they are. Again, this is uh, these are Holbein paints, <clears throat> and they're all very transparent watercolors. So we have here to start with, we have Payne's Gray, we have Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep, Royal Blue, Permanent Violet, Green Gray, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Scarlet, which we will use for the uh, a lot of the flower work today. Uh, bright Rose, may use some of that as well. Uh, probably used Rose maybe more than the Scarlet. Brilliant Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Permanent Yellow Deep, and Lemon Yellow. So I have those and uh, I also have a little bit of white gouache here, titanium white, that I may use around some of the uh, edges of these flowers if I, if I overpaint some of the areas that I want to be white. So I have that available if I want to use it. So I think that's all I want to go through with uh, through for you now. And uh, I'll go back and get my uh, paint lined up here, my uh, image lined up on the screen, zoom in as far as I can, and uh, something like this. If I had a cameraman here, I wouldn't have to do this. Uh, <laughs> but I have to run all my own controls here. I have a whole setup behind me uh, to do this with. Okay, so now we're ready and uh, should be able to see that well. So I'm going to get some clear water and uh, we're going to get started <clears throat> on this thing. And uh, I'm going to use this uh, synthetic uh, brush here that uh, holds a lot of water and it makes good, good uh, coverage of clear paper. <clears throat> I'm not going to cover all the paper. I'm going to try to leave uh, leave out around these where the flowers go. <clears throat> I want to. I'm doing that on purpose so that I don't over over paint a background over these flowers. Um, I am going to paint something over the flowers here on the right side. They're <clears throat> they're kind of in the background, a um, little bit in shadow and. Uh, so I can put a little bit of coloring on those and it uh, won't be a problem. Uh, over here I'm trying to leave these areas totally white and uh, not, not put any clear water on them. I don't want to get the paper wet there right now. I may put some water in them later, but right now I'm just trying to get this whole thing covered with a nice coat of clear water. and. Uh, I think I mentioned this was a this is a photograph from Hanging Rock State Park. Um, it's in uh, I believe I looked it up. I think it's in Raleigh or near Raleigh, North Carolina. So if you're from that area of the country, you maybe know this place. Um, there were a lot of other good images on Google when I googled that state park, um, waterfalls and that sort of stuff and. Uh, so maybe some, I'll get some other photos from that area, even from uh, Johnny Robertson, I don't know. Okay, so there, that's my wet paper. And uh, I'm going to try to put in a, uh, a good background here of uh, some colors that are sort of making a nice underpainting. I'm going to use this, a uh, little bit of this quinacridone gold, uh, since there is a lot of light in this painting. I'm going to put some over here. I'm just going to start putting in some, uh, brushing in some uh, vertical streaks, chokes, uh, to uh, make this as light as possible through here where, um, where I want this light to shine through um, using my one inch brush. Uh, this is, I'm going to add a little bit of blue coloring in here, I think. Uh, I'm painting over another flower right there. Some trouble with this. You gotta keep track of where you are, and I don't do that all the time very well. Sometimes I get so excited and painting away, I just kind of forget where I am. Um, 
a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue here and uh, maybe a little bit of my violet maybe um, up here in this area I want to give a little depth to this painting so I'm going to put some sort of some blue sky back here um, and it will turn green as it gets into the um, yellow which is okay um, maybe a little bit over here I don't know as it since it's wet it will uh, soften off a lot um, over on this side I'm going to start putting in some of my uh, darker colors pick up a little of my Bain, Payne's gray so my ultramarine blue and start putting those in over here so these are a lot darker and I just realized I went over sort of my flower over here so I'll just kind of blot that out a little bit and see if we can leave some nice um, areas where that some of those background flowers are going to be um, I have a lot of darks in here this will lighten up a lot uh, so I'm not too worried about it uh, but it is all kind of dark down here in the bottom so I'm just going to try to get a lot of this paper covered except for some of the white areas you can see it's even drying out now I don't know how well you can see that but it's uh, papers drying out this 300 pound paper holds a lot of water and uh, I didn't spend a whole lot of time putting water on it but uh, I'm going to soften these edges a little bit so I don't have too many hard edges around here. There we go. All right. So I've kind of left some light areas there. This other flower right in, where is it? It's right in here somewhere. Yeah, it's right in here. Okay. So just kind of taking out a little bit of that, uh, a little bit of that uh, color that's in there. And all right so we've got some interesting colors this this purple and the blue will kind of go together nicely over here i want to keep it light um, all right so that's sort of the underpainting if you will and uh, so i got the paper wet got the underpainting on and let that dry a little bit um, before I put some more on it I don't want to go back into this background too much because I will end up with uh, putting blossoms and that sort of stuff in there which I don't want so I'll clean out my palette get this going <clears throat> all right so let's uh, look at this background here now since we've got it going I'm going to uh, I'll get my round brush here and start looking at some of the some of the greens I'm going to put some purple and green together and for some of this background there's background trees here um, and I just want them to be really light but I want them to be have a little bit of a, a bluish or purplish cast if I can um, it's kind of kind of dark but let I me mean, because the paper's wet um, it's going to uh, lighten up a lot. Watercolors always white lighten up at least 20% maybe. Uh, so I just want to put in a lot of this background here with I'm using my gray green, I'm using my uh, lemon lemon yellow. Lemon yellow will give us that nice bright bright green color and uh, I'm going to kind of put it down here near where this flower is I want these to sort of stand out there put in some more darks in here now a little bit darker I've got some leaves that are going to go in front of this as well um, so just going to uh, keep putting in these really light colors over here. I got some really nice light yellowish 
color. Combination of greens and darker green. So because that's starting to dry already, I'm getting these uh, rough textures here. You can see how the brush is just, it's just picking up whatever is on the, uh, the high points of the, the brush. And uh, that's what's leaving there. Just kind of nice. Give me some more darks in here. A few more darks like this. Some water. Let's see. All right. Um, I'll pick up a little of my Payne's Gray now. See if I can darken some of these spots in here with a third value. Get a dark value, a medium value, and a light value, and all of a sudden you've got some three-dimensionality in your painting. So let's pull these down. They're still wet. And uh, leave some holes. Leave room for these flowers over here. It gets really kind of dark, really dark on this right side over here. It's got some uh, lizard or something out, probably from some of these flowers that are floating around over here. So, yeah, let's just kind of pop these things in and let them go wherever they will. Uh, let's see, where does this flower go? He's over here, okay. So I'm just sort of experimenting today, folks, as well. I, uh, since I don't paint flowers very often, I'm, I'm learning too. So hopefully you might learn something from my failures, from my challenge here that I'm giving myself. Um, negative painting around these flowers. See, there's some, uh, trying to see my sketch through there, it doesn't show up too well. Um, okay, so we're getting some nice stuff here. I'll come back and hit just a little more, some yellow or greenish yellow here in some of these areas. Just put a few more things stringing across here like this. Yeah. Um, got a lot of darks down here. Try to make some of this a little softer in here. I don't want such hard edges everywhere. Um, a little softer edges here, maybe. Um, if you want it got a hard edge, you can always make it soft by putting some water on it. As long as you don't over wet it, you'll get a soft edge and not a blossom. So, okay, so there we go. Now, I think I want to come down here in this area here where I've got a lot of darks. Really need darker, darker than that. I'm going to have to come back and repaint all of this probably with the, where the darks are if I don't get it dark enough on the first pass, which usually happens. I usually have to come back and and paint things a second time to get them as dark as I need to. Just paint around the bottom of this flower here. Goes over by the leaf, put it down here. It's usually uh, watercolor artist's biggest difficulty is trying to get enough dark in your painting to make the star of the show shine show show up <laughs> um, got some greens in here I see I'm going to throw more some green in there got some yellow greens and we've got some 
things. I just want to mix mix this up a little bit, get some different colors, bring in some of the light yellow, um, some of the darks. Um, over here we got, got some sort of a big, let's see there's a big leaf that sort of comes out here. I want to paint around. I don't know if I have that in the right place or not, but it's going to be there when I get done because I'm going to force it to be there. All right, that's that one. Let's see if I can get a few more. <clears throat> Getting this royal blue mixed with, <clears throat> excuse me, with my uh, Payne's gray. It is really dark. It really gives me a nice, good dark color here. I'm trying to leave out as much of my areas as I can with uh, by this negative painting. Mm -hmm. Just painting in some dark things over here. All right, just putting in, there's going to be a bunch of green greenery in here. I don't want to overlay too much of that. I just overlaid a, I'm going to have a petal right there, so I'm going to pick that up. All right, so let's uh, go back and see how this looks now. Um, when I see it on the camera, on the uh, video, it looks like it's a little dull in some areas for some reason. I don't know if it's just the way the camera's picking it up or the way it shows up on my monitor. So I'm going to see if I can pop in some more of those brighter colors. This quinacridone gold is really a bright color. Let's throw some of that in there. Lighten it up a little bit. Um, It has this beautiful transparency, and uh, got a big old blossom right there. I didn't realize I got, but we'll paint him out. Okay, let's see here. Let me get a uh, little bit of a a tree in here, or two. Picking up some of my uh, burnt umber and and my. Uh, See, I've got a little tree trunk in here somewhere. Right there. He kind of goes up there. I'm going to let it set for a little bit so I don't uh, run over it. Let's see, put in a little bit of a Some of these are going to go over. Some are going to go behind. So this is burn umber and a little bit of my bluish color in there. Um, Okay, so we've got some negative painting, got some positive painting going on here. These have big dark green trunks and some big leaves, so I'll come back and put those in in a little bit. But let's just make sure we get these things in. All right, so those will lighten up a little bit. I may put in just a couple of further ones back, just very lightly back here. All right. Um, tend to want to throw in a few splats of water to give it some different texture and uh, make it loose. If you want to make your painting loose, throw in some splats of water. Get your, get, you have these little spray bottles, you can throw those Throw that in and it will certainly make blossoms and that sort of stuff that sometimes you don't want, but sometimes they also make it look your, make your painting look very uh, 
very um, impressionistic. Um, okay, so pretty much the background is mostly done. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it for now and move on to something else. I may come back and put a few, few more things, some le uh, tree trunks and branches and stuff in that after a bit. But I'm going to get go and start working on these flowers now. Um, okay, I'll take some of this garbage out of my palette. All right, let's get going on some flowers. Let's see what color we got. I'm going to use that <clears throat> this um, rose color, I think. See how that looks. Not exactly the color, but it's pretty close. I'm going to see what I have with this. Oh, this other one, quinacridone scarlet, is a good color. Um, so I'm going to use it and put a little bit of that with this rose together and get myself just a little bit of a bit of a purplish color. I'm going to start over here on this guy on the right side because he's in the shadow. So we're going to come over here and just put in some uh, brush strokes to kind of see if we can put in a something fairly loose over here. Um, comes down kind of like this. Let's change the color. Pull in some of this other reddish color maybe as it comes down and as it starts to touch into some of these this background here let's pull it over here put some water in it let it soften up a little bit in some areas so I'm using the water now to sort of let it blend and blur a little bit. These two colors are probably the best colors I got on this palette to come close to this, um, this flower shades. I'm going to pop in a few darker colors in here to give it some three-dimensionality. Here I put in a few more things like this. I've got a another one's got a lot of light in it. So I'm leaving some room now to come back and put some darks and maybe some leaves in here. So I don't want to I don't want to just paint that all in like a a block. I want to leave some spaces in there. Okay. I'm still working very abstractly. I'm not trying to paint a specific uh, rhododendron. I mean, the, uh, if you look at the anatomy of a rhododendron, there, there's, I think there's 800 varieties or something like that of rhododendron. So, um, trying to paint a particular one would be difficult at best. And for somebody like me who doesn't paint flowers very often, it would be next to impossible. <clears throat> so these, I'm trying to keep these slightly muted with a little bit of this purple in it so they're not totally uh, bright and shiny. I kind of lost the purple on this one back here a little bit. Uh, I want them to be a little bit muted because I want the stars show to be these ones in the front here. So I'm just putting a little of this uh, purplish color. I'm going to take some clear water now and just sort of soften these edges, kind of let them run together. Um, this area is the brightest on this particular flower, so let's lighten it up. I'm only using one brush pretty much for this so far. I've been using this round. Uh, um, and um, sometimes I do that. Sometimes I get stuck on a, a brush. And uh, don't want to leave it. <clears throat> it's kind of happening right now. All right. If anybody has any questions, please put them in the chat window. I'll try to answer if possible. Now my next flower is clear down here. I've got a bunch of greenery and stuff I'm going to put in here. 
it's really dark. I didn't didn't fill this in with a lot of dark here. Put in a few more um, leaf-like things, kind of or petals coming out here, like this there in the shadow. Okay. So those will do. Okay, over here. Start on this guy. I'm going to bring up. You can't even see the sketch, I'm sure, but there's a, a flower here that's got some interesting petals that kind of come down like this, kind of point like that. Got some. Uh, need even a smaller brush. Let me try my number four here and see if I can get a little sharper point on these. Um, there's um, kind of comes in like this. Um, these are the foreground petals. And they have some background petals as well that are a lot lighter up here. Let's leave a little bit of a space between them. Let them run together in a few spots. Now see these, these edges, I can clean those up when I put some dark background behind it. <clears throat> make them very sharp and make them stand out. But right now they look kind of bland. So these have a lot of little pointed things going on here. And as this is drying off a little bit, I'm gonna put just a little bit of clear water in here. So it's not yellow, although these transparent watercolors do let you see through. I've never painted a rhododendron, folks, so I'm not uh, repainting something I've done before. I'm, I'm learning here as I go along, trying to uh, learn, <coughs> learn how to paint these things myself. So. <coughs> Just sort of reacting to the to the painting, trying to react to the uh, photograph, and uh, as much as I can. Um, I actually haven't even been looking at the photograph hardly at all, other than trying to see where some of the major parts are. Okay, so now these big ones. I see some water that just wants to run down my page there. All right, let's see what we got here. We've got some, I'm gonna use the bigger brush again because um, I need some bigger areas I have to cover. Two reds. Um, the center of this guy here is like right there, bam. Um, put a little dark in there if I can get a dark, a dark color there, like that. A dark color up in here somewhere. I don't know. I don't see it right now. Um, but these sort of blend out into petals. So I'm just sort of hitting, filling in some of these areas where I've got. There's a ton of colors and uh, values in here. These things sort of really have a lot of variation in them. So 
Well, let's put these in. When I got it here, I'm going to come back and put just a little more dark in the center and let it sort of run out. Painting vertically like I do, it all runs down, which is the, if I had it on a flat sheet of uh, a desk, I could kind of control the, the blending a little bit better. But here I'm just kind of letting it run vertically down. Um, I may come back and have to force some of that in, I don't know. But right now I'm just trying to see if I can get it to uh, blend with what's already on the paper while it's wet. So this is one of the smaller flowers here. Let's put in another. Change the color a little bit. Change these up or you won't be able to see them very well. Something like this maybe. Let's put in a few dark colors here around some of these. And it's, I'll let it, it's going to blend a little bit now with that, which is kind of what I'm trying to get it to do. With that, and come back and take a little clear water and just pull it. So I'm really trying to make a lot of little things that look like petals of some kind here. Stand out, stick up, whatever, and uh, then come back and try to put in some dark values around the edges so that you can kind of def define where the petals really are. Something like that, maybe. Since it's wet, it does tend to uh, <clears throat> continue to uh, blend. It's a little bit too light, put a little bit darker in there. Okay, let's just throw some more of this light in here. Up here, we've got a lot of light, light color. Can't hardly really see that. I'm going to just kind of cover some of this and see how that works with this. It's really too light up there, but let's just blend it down. So this one I started by pounding the center, and these I'm starting by just sort of putting in the, the background, if you will, and uh, letting it sort of run as I put it in here. So I want to have some nice abstract shapes in here so I don't have everything uh, circular, rectangular, whatever. Get some more of this here. Hmm. See how that does. Come back and get me some water and see if I can just sort of blend it a little bit. <clears throat> A little bit of a texture here with the with my uh, paper towel. Might even do a little painting with that paper towel. I don't know. It won't come off the paper towel. It'll pick up, but it won't paint off of it. So, could use a sponge. Uh, that's another way to put uh, put paint on. You could take a sponge and put it on. Uh, that will work. Um, See here how we're doing. B. 
big old run going down there. A couple of runs going down. All right, so I've got kind of at the, this is kind of the ugly stage that most paintings go through. Um, pick up a few more value changes here, put a few more colors in. Um, some over here on the bottom where this is shaded. Um, here. And uh, I can put in some things that look like petals in there. Those little stamens stick up. I think it's too early to put them in, but uh, just blend them a little bit, let them. A little crazy that it doesn't look exactly like rhododendrons to me but uh, hey we're all learning here I'm gonna come back now and see if I can get some of my darker colors start coming back into some of these areas that are <clears throat> kind of dry over here get me some of this dark 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 green maybe and uh, here and put in some dark colors. Up here, we've got some very dark colors coming in. Okay, so you're seeing me put in the uh, this background here that's going to hopefully make these things pop a little bit, maybe. <clears throat> it's got to be really dark up here, too. One thing this palette doesn't have is a really black, dark black. I'm just going to put this in and see if I can fade it over into some of these other leaves. <clears throat> So, darkest dark I can get is my royal blue, along with my Payne's gray, and put a little bit of my uh, umber in there, a little, maybe darken it down even a little more. Uh, but uh, it's about the best you can get out of some of these. So your palette really makes a difference, folks. What you uh, what you have in your palette and what you can do with it. And uh, if you really need dark, dark colors, you have to be able to mix, mix them unless you buy a black, which I do have some black. I don't have it in this palette, but uh, I say so you're having trouble finding me, Lindy. I, I noticed that the when I was trying this out earlier this morning, uh, YouTube was having trouble with their streaming process. I was getting all these errors. I was afraid I wasn't even going to be able to broadcast. Um, but it did uh, it did straighten out, at least on my end, from what I can tell. Um, and uh, I didn't know. I wasn't seeing any comments, so I wasn't sure anybody was even seeing me. Um, these... Um, 
rhododendrons are kind of like like a shrub almost. They uh, have these little uh, things that uh, let them grow um, like a bush, a shrub. And uh, I learned that doing some research. I'm glad you're here, folks. Hi, Via Vaughn. Thank you. Um, I'm not surprised some of you lost the feed because I was uh, lost my uh, own <laughs> ability to broadcast when I was testing out. I usually try to test stuff out in the morning um, before I'm going to do a broadcast, and uh, it was giving me a 500 server error is what it told me, and so I fired some messages off to YouTube saying, what is going on here? Can't be losing my broadcast. It looks like maybe we did. So you see how these darks are bringing out, <clears throat> bringing out this uh, these flowers, and they just sort of explode when you put a dark around them. Got some more leaves and things I gotta put up here. Up there. And some other ones that kind of come up here. Like that. <clears throat> it's not dark enough. Dark green, royal blue, purple, Payne's gray. Really, this is too light in here, um, but I'm gonna have to put some other petals around it, or petals in there to kind of tone that down a little bit. It's really too too light because your eye is gonna go over there. The light go eye goes to the lightest light against the darkest dark. So uh, I'm going to have to fix that a little bit. I don't know why my notification didn't come out as soon as I went live. It was supposed to go out immediately when it went live, and I went live at 15 minutes till uh, 1 o'clock. So I was hoping everybody would get that notification, but apparently a lot of you did not. Let's see, I'm going to put just a few more light colors in here. Tone this down a little bit. Like that. Put a few more light ones in here, maybe, and cover up a few things. Um, some petals in here. There's needs to be some darker. So I'm kind of just reacting to the uh, painting here now. I'm not even kind of looking at the photograph hardly. So we're just putting in dark leaves here that kind of stand out in the over the background so you can't see the uh, background very well. Um, got some that kind of come over this way, like this, come down into so just making some strokes that look like leaves pointing up there. This is a, a forest. 
Okay, I've got some dark trunks in here, a little dark trunks there. All right, let me see if I can get a flat brush out, maybe use some angular strokes and see if that changes up things a little bit. Right in here, I've got a supposed to be a, light, a lot greener than that. Maybe some of this yellow and green, some blue. It's a little better, maybe. This is a big leaf right in here. Comes all the way down. Like that. Need to have some other leaves. Okay, so let's get up here and put one of these in. I don't have the exact colors here that's in the photograph, but um, you can kind of, you don't have to copy the photographs in the color, or the, in the photograph. Um, I don't worry too much about that. So we've got tons of these. Put maybe a bit of my orange in there, see if I can change the color slightly on some of these. There's a great big one that sticks way out across here like this. See my transparent watercolor there, you can see my dark dark color coming through. Okay. These other greens, I got more greens coming up here from the bottom. There's a big darker one coming up here. into this dark. Something like that. This is way too light in here again. You see I got it, uh, I should have put more dark in there to start with, but I didn't want to lose my uh, ability to put these lighter colors in there. Okay, so we're getting some, making some progress here. I might be able to put a light glaze over that. I'll come back maybe with this these areas and put a put a bit of a a glaze or something over that to make it uh, a little bit darker, just so it's not. I don't know what's in here. I'm just throwing in some things to make it kind of fill in some of these spots, some of these white spots in here. Don't want all that white over there. I don't want your eye to go over here. And if I leave the whitest, lightest light against the darkest dark over here, that's where your eye is going to go. So that's why I'm doing this, putting in some darker darks. Wow. I don't know if the internet's slow. I think YouTube's had troubles today for some reason. I. Uh, So you may have to re-watch this when, the, uh, when I get the final editing done, <clears throat> if you want, uh, just because you didn't get to tune in right at the beginning. I'm putting in some really dark darks back in here now, um, which is going to make these leaves pop. See what you can do with values when you just... Wow. 
somewhere dark in here. Okay, and take a little bit of my myself a little texture there so it's not just a big color. All right, instead of putting a Instead of coming back and putting a wash over it, I'm just putting in, putting in some of this dark value here. Um, Paint in a few negative shapes here. See the extra leaves I just created there by painting a dark negative shape around them. All right, so at least there's something, a little bit something going on there. Uh, Torn a few dabs with my paper towel. All this area down here has got a whole bunch of stuff going on that's uh, just nondescript abstract shapes. There is some sort of a leaf or something going on down here. Just pulling a few dark things, kind of make it look like there might be some stems or some leaves or something going on. Um, this guy's got a leaf. Got a, uh, yeah, that negative painting does uh, wonders for for you okay let's see I'm kind of leaving my big flower here I'm letting it all dry out so I can come back and put some more color in there so I'm kind of painting all around everything here so I'm just gonna put in some more dark blue or purple or something around this guy here. So I'm really trying to make them shine, pop out. So now you see I'm making these <clears throat> sharp edges I was talking about right now by putting this dark around. It's making these petals really stand out that weren't standing out very much before. Take this and pull it down, sort of give myself a, another leaf in there. Put some yellow on top maybe. So we've got a bunch of leaves in here. So I'm kind of apologizing in advance because I don't paint what, paint the flowers very often. So I'm uh, learning here as I go and uh, trying to make these things look as realistic as possible. Trying to put in some nice abstract shapes here and there that make you think this is a kind of some shadows from the uh, the sun hitting things, extra leaves floating around. I didn't like all that big black in there even though it was giving me some good darks. Um, same over here. I'm, if you run into something that kind of looks like mud, interesting little tip here. You can usually use some kind of yellow and get in there and, and just sort of break it up. Um, works pretty well and uh, that coupled with maybe a few squirts of your uh, spray bottle will help loosen things up a lot. So over here we've got some more leaves. I got some dark behind these leaves. So I'm going to put the leaves in here. 
big ones coming right off the page here. Like that, I want to do some more negative painting around it. <clears throat> um, up here, if I got, I got, this is, put in some of these colors in here. Darken some things down a little bit up there. Um, I'm using this uh, same green I've got here below and sort of tapping them in up here a little bit so we have a little more closed in areas. So it's not totally I like the brightness back there in the distance, but I don't want it to be so bright that it confuses you where to look. Let's put in a few things there. And all right, that toned that down a little bit now, so that's not as bright. So <clears throat> it's all about values and trying to get them looking right. And here we've got a big old tree that's kind of sticking right in there. the rest of him in. And soften the edge as it goes into the tree there. Soften these edges. And maybe make them even a little darker down here. Okay, so, so I'm painting all around my flower here, so trying to get a lot of this stuff in that's uh, giving this third value and adding some abstract shapes so we have uh, enough abstraction going on that we don't have something clear that we're looking at over there. So the whole idea is to get this sort of framed in and uh, make it so you have to look here. Then I have to come back and make that look right because it doesn't look right yet to me. I'm going to work on that for a few minutes. We've been going for about an hour, so hopefully we can uh, finish up here in an hour, or not an hour, but at least maybe half an hour. I'm going to put in just some... Uh, Darker tones here, cover these areas up. Okay, so now we've got, uh, got that. I'm gonna take my uh, dark with my black or colors in it here, get a lot of water in it, and just sort of throw in some Maybe I'll throw in some splatter. I don't know whether it's going to work or not there. Okay, so that loosens that up quite a bit now. <clears throat> All right, let's go back and see if we can <clears throat> work on this. These flowers. I think I told you, I, never painted a rhododendron before and I'm just trying to go from the photographs so I don't really know too much about how they look um, but we're going to see if we can bring out some some of the highlights and uh, and make these things look like real flowers in there so let's get some some of this red out here I'm going to get some more a bigger brush than that I need more paint These two red colors, this uh, bright rose, is really a good color for that. And as I use that by itself, I think I'm going to try to use that as my <clears throat> darkening color and try to come in here and see if I can uh, really hit these things in the right places. I've already got some dark color there. Uh, that's the wrong place there. 
So let's put it um, right around here is where I want it. Trying to highlight or outline some of the center of this. flower and it needs to sort of be wrapped around the whole thing and then sort of bleed it out sort of let it soft edge over here combination of soft edge maybe some finger work Okay, then we got that. Then we got a lighter one down here that's got just a few little streaks in it, but it connects to this guy. So by trying to get ourselves some light and darker values and highlighting the edge of this other um, flower here, we're giving it some dimension here. Alright. So let's just sort of feather this out a little bit with some clear water. I'm just using this uh, brilliant <coughs> bright rose primarily and we've got a number of these little stamens sticking out of this flower here. I guess that's what they are. So we'll throw a few of those in, try to soften them up a little bit, maybe around the center. So, just putting in a few of these petals that sort of help identify what's going on there as best I can. A bit too much, maybe. So, it's uh, just a matter of trying to uh, find these flowers sitting in the middle of this mass of pinkish color, trying to find petals, <laughs> which I'm not very good at, unfortunately. So I'm not probably not giving you a great demonstration here, but maybe the way it looks on the camera, it will be better than the way it looks here in my face. Um, but these are all bunched together. They're just a big glob of flowers and petals and center sticking out and there's a lot of just a whole lot of stuff going on here another little circular area that's got a something like a white center in it so i'm leaving some whites in there to kind of give you the idea that there's a lot of sun hitting on this part of it and uh, Trying to make some uh, things that look like petals here. I'm probably messing over, probably overworking this thing, but uh, I want to uh, at least try to finish it off for you the best I can. 
the white out here will sort of Okay, it's really hard to delineate between these things because they're all running together. And I want the petals to actually go the other way. Something like that, and then come back and sort of Mix them up a little bit so they don't look so perfect. Dab in some spots of color. I need to dark, put in a little bit of this uh, violet in some spots to sort of give me some um, shadow, if you will. I think that may help a little. Yeah. In some areas where we've got petals that are putting a shadow on another petal. Um, just a little bit of that stuff. All right, so uh, up here, I've got, I've got. I need to come in with some darker up there. That's kind of get me some uh, <clears throat> dark color around this edge so I can actually identify these petals better. There, so you see the top of that now sticking out? You see the difference? When you have something you can't tell what it is, if you can do some painting in behind it, some darker values, all of a sudden you're getting these things to show up. Leave some. All right, I don't know if that looks a lot like rhododendrons enough or not, but uh, I'm going to probably stop on this very shortly. I want to put in just a few more, uh, some tree trunks and things up here that I think I still know how to paint. Um, put some colors and values. This needs to be fairly dark in some of these areas. I think I've got it pretty well done. All right. Um, I could probably spend some more time on this. I may. Sometimes after I shut the video off, I spend a few minutes and uh, keep going just because I see something that I didn't see while we were painting. and. Uh, so I usually will spend a little bit of time putting in some things to help it hopefully make it look better. A few shadows here. Just break up all that, some of that monotony of all of those um, pinks. A little bit of water, um, a few things on these leaves to make them look like they got there really are leaves. Um, okay, what else can I do? I think I've I've splattered. I've uh, maybe just. Don't know when to quit, folks. Put in some of this uh, bit of dark in here to help 
identify this area one a little bit better. That way it's a little bit more abstract. I don't want it to be a circle. I've kind of got an ellipse out of it, but I want to make some of these things just a little more <clears throat> abstract if I can. Turning some of these into more definable, either a petal or a, a leaf. enough. All right, I'm going to throw my name on here. We've been going an hour and 15 minutes about, so sorry some of you couldn't get online this, on this live broadcast, so I'm going to, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, I'll re-edit this video in a couple days. I'll have it posted back up with all of the uh, um, final work, and you can re-watch it, so uh, hopefully that's going to pay you back a little bit. I'm, I don't know what happened. I'm pretty sure it was YouTube's problem because I had a problem at like 11 o'clock this morning when I tried to uh, update my <clears throat> event notice. Um, it was giving me a server error. So all right. I said I was stopping and then I come back and put some more in. All right, folks, there you go. <clears throat> I think I'm going to stop and say, uh, whoops, move it back over a little bit so you can see it a little better. Okay, I hope you like that. Um, it has a little bit too much light in here. I may fix that up a little bit, tone that down just a little bit because when you look, your eye tends to go over here instead of here. So. That's always an indication I've got the lightest light against the darkest dark over here, which is not the focal point necessarily. I'd rather it be over here. So um, rather than take more time from you, I know you've uh, had trouble getting online today, and so <laughs> I'm going to uh, zoom back and say uh, thanks for watching again, and I hope you uh, enjoyed what you've been able to see of this, and I will have it uploaded again uh, in a couple, three days, and uh, you can watch it in, in its entirety. And uh, so uh, check out my Facebook page, check out my uh, website, and get the uh, images and reference photos, and uh, give this a try. Let me know how you do. I'd be interested to see how you make out with this floral painting. Uh, and uh, I think you can always keep practicing flowers and probably never get good at them unless you, that's all you do. So uh, it's not all I do, as you know. So. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, till I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.